Need a monitor for your Raspberry Pi 400 or Raspberry Pi? Need a temporary monitor and don't have a lot of room? Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this using your smartphone or tablet. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use your smartphone or tablet as a traveling monitor. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode. There are affiliate links available. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notification. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video on how to do your smartphone or tablet as a traveling monitor. For first going to go over the hardware that's required and then actually going through and doing the setup. So let's go ahead and get started. Once you've seen what it takes to get this put together, and trust me, there's not that many parts to this, you're going to wonder out why you didn't do this earlier. Whether you've got a Raspberry Pi 400 or a Raspberry Pi, trust me, this is one of those things you want to have in your back pocket, even if you only need it once in a while. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Of all the items you see in this picture, what do they all have in common? Well, the answer is probably not much in the grand scheme of things. But when you put everything together, that's when the magic starts to happen. So I've got my Samsung Galaxy S9 smartphone right here. It's important on when you start to do this, that whatever phone you use supports the ability uh, for what they call OTG, as far as getting the accepting input, in this case, from a video source. You're going to need an adapter cable that goes from USB female to either micro USB or USB-C, depending on what you've got. Now, this is a little gem that really is going to make the magic happen. Depending on where you get this, it's about $20, $25. Uh, one of them I was able to get off Amazon. I actually bought two from two different sources. Even though the stenciling looks the same, in one, this part was, the tab here was blue, signifying USB 3.0. Another one, it was it's either white or black. I don't remember right offhand. But I always like having spares. And when they were talking, you know, twenty dollars or less one of them was like a thirteen dollars it's it's cheap to to go ahead and do it and then i ordered a complete set of cabling so i can go from just about anything and it's very straightforward to do there are several apps that you see links for in the description and this is where you can decide what's going to work best for you now some of them you will lose access to the touch screen. And when I say the touch screen is being able to zoom in, zoom out, but keep looking. Now the one that I've got on the camera, or like on the phone rather, it's from, uh, it says USB camera, connect easy cap or USB webcam. You may have to find more than one app. Uh, I tried setting this up on the Amazon Fire 8 that I've got, it kept crashing. So not going to be able to use that one. I've got another tablet on the way in. So hopefully it will be here before I get this video posted. And then you can see what it looks like from a larger scale. There may be a little bit of tweaking you're going to have to do, but nothing that you can't get taken care of. So you can go ahead and have your Raspberry Pi booted up. And I'm just going to reach over here and get mine turned on you see the power light coming up now i'm going to take the usb cable and you see i've already got mine set up ready to go i've got the video capture device on here and then i've got the cable to make things happen so we're going to have to move things around here just a little bit and then when you plug it in, you should see a message pop up almost right away if everything's working right. We'll say cancel to access null. 
will say USB camera. I'm going to say just once because I may want to flip around to the different devices. Now, it's, it's showing that it's not getting a signal at this point, but that should take care of itself here. Just a matter of a minute, because I just booted up the Raspberry Pi, and sometimes you may have to unplug and plug it back in, because it may just be a little touchy. And if you've got a case on your smartphone, then you're probably going to have to take it off, because this connector has to go all the way in. And like I said, sometimes it's just a matter of you have to unplug and replug things. So you can see that's, granted, it's small print, but that is not a problem. And you can see that you can very easily read what I'm typing. Now, early on, this was a little bit blurry when I first set it up. What I had to adjust was go in here to size and I set it up to NPEG 1920 by 1080 30 FPS. As you can see, there's a host of settings down here, but that was one. Once I went to it, then, you know, yeah, I can even use my fingers to make this very readable. So if you're getting into a command line situation, then this is certainly a very viable option to work with and if you've got a tablet available then then so much the better but this certainly beats an option of not having anything to do with the screen now some of the webcam pieces that are there are not going to or the webcam software rather are not going to let you adjust the screen but as you can see i've been going in going out and once the camera refocuses then you can see it's very clear to work with now i just changed over to the sd card that had the full graphics desktop on it and you can see it's in the process of coming up right now should have it here just momentarily and that's the resolution you're looking at. i could even go in here a little bit more and make it very easy to work with and it's just a matter of trying to drive the mouse in the opposite direction from what you may be used to let's get the screen down here a little bit more but you can see this is very easy to make happen so let's take the screen back to full size as you can tell you can do pretty much everything that you're used to now granted the print may be a little smaller but it's nothing that you can't take care of but you can see this is something really it's very straightforward to have in your bag of tricks and it's well worth the time to get this put together now i went and bought the otg cables which are the usb female to either micro usb or usb type c and that way i can get to just about anything that i would want to and then as a part of my testing i actually picked up two of these each from different sources but that's at least going to be an option that gives you in case you think one of these is is acting up and then you've always got a, a backup or if you want to have two different devices and yet ways you can easily switch between them totally up to you but i think this is well worth having in your bag of tricks for either when you're doing troubleshooting at the office and don't have a monitor handy or if you're doing some things around your smart home again you can use your smartphone or a tablet as your monitor give this a try i think you'll be very happy with it if you're watching this on youtube you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on that like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on that subscribe button now and enable notifications we'll see you in the next episode Thanks for watching.